In the previous video, we used the finite element method P1 in dimension 1. In this video, we're going to do the same thing, but in dimension 2. So let me first define a finite, the finite element P1 in this context. So we're going to define HH as the space of all functions V that are continuous, uh, such that the restriction to an element, to a triangle, is in P1. In other words, it has to be uh, a polynomial of degree 1. And we're going to consider the subspace, which will be H0H, which will be the f all, all the functions V in HH that will also vanish on the boundary. So here is uh, an example of such a function. Uh, we have the mesh underneath, and you can see that on, on each triangle, it is basically a, uh, I mean, a, a polynomial of degree 1. Now, we're going to uh, consider uh, a basis for uh, the spaces. HH is a linear subspace of H1 of dimension JV, and H0H is a linear subspace of H10 of dimension JVD. And remember, when we talked about mesh in the first videos of these chapters, uh, this chapter we define JV and JVD. Uh, JV is basically the number of nodes, while JVD is the number of nodes that are not on the boundary. And we will consider this, base, this basis phi j, which basically, uh, that's a function, it's a hat function. Uh, well, obviously, it's in dimension 2, so it, it goes from uh, R2 into uh, R, or to R from omega into R, actually. And uh, what happens is that it will have the value 1 at, uh, the, 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 at xi, and uh, wh when you are at any other node uh, around it, then it will, it will be equal to zero, and then obviously the, the, it will be equal to zero uh, from, from there or all the way on, on your domain omega. So, so here is a, a pretty nice uh, picture of it, and I would like to thank uh, Michel Kern for uh, that, uh, that, that graph. Uh, so you can see that this is one of the hat function, uh, or one of the hat functions, and basically you have uh, plenty of them. Uh, and, and that is your basis. So if you understood how things work in dimension one, well, that is basically a generalization in dimension two. Now, what we're saying is that phi j for all from one to j v will be a basis of h h, and if you consider uh, one to j v d, that will be a basis of h zero h. Obviously, you have to number your basis properly for this to. To, to work. Okay, now let us consider our uh, partial differential equation minus Laplace U equals F on omega with the uh, homogeneous Dirac binary condition. Now, as we have seen last week in chapter 4, we have established a virtual formulation uh, that is given here, where obviously we have a bilinear form A, which is the integral of del U del V. Uh, which has been proven to be coercive and continuous uh, on H10. We also have this linear continuous form L on H10, which is the integral of Fv. Now, we're basically going to do exactly what we did in dimension 1. We're going to simply use this on the triangulation of omega. Uh, then we're going to use the spaces H0H, which will be included in H10 of omega, with the basis which just defined. And then we will look at the virginal approximation, and we will uh, consider the rigidity matrix AH, and that is simply the integral of del phi i del phi j. And during the lab session, we'll see what it is. Uh, you will see we have four, um, well, I mean, obviously h is in, involved as well, but I mean, you will see the, on, on, on the diagonal, you will have uh, four, and then well, you, you'll see that in the, in, in the lab. Uh, you can actually compute it. You can even you know, stop the video now and, and do it. There is nothing that stops you from doing it. You can compute this matrix. And you can also compute the vector bh, uh, therefore, you have the possibility to carry out the computations exactly the same way within dimension 1, and you can find the uh, values of u at each node. Of course, it's important to keep track of the numbering system of the triangles, uh, but what happens is that you will eventually reach a h u h equals b h, 
which means that you will find UH. And as before, the limit of UH will be the solution you're looking for. Okay, so it's really the same as in dimension one. You know, obviously it's a bit more complicated because you're dealing with triangles and you need to be a little careful. You need to keep track of the, the number of the triangle. And so, 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 so it's a little bit more complicated, but in terms of concepts, it's basically the same. Okay. Now, before we, we end this video, I would just like to point out a very useful tool in this, con in, in, in this context, which is when, when you consider a triangle, basically A1, A2, A3, uh, which hopefully is not flat, so it's not a gener it is a non-degenerated uh, de de uh, triangle, then um, basically what we're saying is that A1, A2, A3 will be unisolvent, P1 unisolvent, if given F1, F2, F3 in R3, there exists a unique P in P1, you polynomial in P1, such that P applied to AI is FI for I equals to 1, 2, or 3. And what we are saying is that it is, can be useful to consider the barycentric coordinates of the points, uh, because obviously uh, when you have your triangle, it, it will be a useful way to put things together. So uh, it, it will be a natural basis of, of P1 on the triangle K and the barycentric coordinates of the system will depend on the triangle. So it's a very useful way to put things together. Uh, but, you know, again, uh, what, what, what happens here is that you could basically uh, do everything without it, but we're just saying that this is a useful tool.